live here. Hockey Nation fans, welcome back to another early edition of the Hockey Nation live show. This is your coach, Coach Francis, directly from South Florida. And we have to go to all the way to the West Coast to find Michael DeVillano. Hi, Pierre. Another busy day, and I think it's just going to get busier. Getting closer, closer. Weekend. That's true, but... Um, so we had a busy day yesterday again. Some surprising stuff, but maybe some not. I guess it's not necessarily surprising, but interesting. Um... Good morning to Adam and good morning to Kimberly who've joined us already. Uh, the first thing uh, we'll just touch on before we get to kind of the big trade was that Ben Bishop agrees to waive his no movement clause. This allows Dallas to expose uh, Anton Kudobin. We know Bishop missed the whole year. Like, what do you think of this? And it sounds like they approached Dallas. Well, that does that's give them a chance to protect uh, Kudubin for first of all. And then also, uh, it's more about not him. It's more about they give a chance to have another uh, protection inside the team. So, um, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, um, Dallas is not going to be too much hurt about that. He's going to lose a bottom six, worst case. Um, that's the only thing they can lose. Uh, they are losing maybe Ali Chiak. That would be something. Uh, tonight, uh, tomorrow night is the five o'clock um, p.m. when they release the the their protection list for Kraken. Oh, that's so, good. So after that, you're going to see a lot of change before today until tomorrow night five p.m. You're going to get some teams going. To, it's going to be very active whatsoever this morning. Nothing happening. Just a two minor contract. But uh, there will be really interesting about that. And then from Saturday night, 5 p.m., like uh, everybody else, everybody's going to see each team, their protection. Then after that, like Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, everybody like us, like everybody else, like we do, uh, they will do the mock draft where they're going to see the, I don't know, like the all the players you can pick at that moment. So it's 5 p.m. tonight is when the lists come out? The 17, yes. Is it 5 p.m. Uh, Eastern? Yep. Yep. Okay. So I'll get it at two. Um, so you don't think that he's like, it's weird. He missed the whole year with an injury. Is he just anticipating they're not going to pick him? Um, it, 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 for me, it's about this word. So you have some players like Eric Johnson, Milan, Luchik, uh, Jeff Skinner. They don't, they, they try to help the team. So right. that, that's so, what the, the case with Ben Bishop's about that one over there, uh, the injury and everything like that. He got, you know, I mean, he took him over like a 16 month to recovery and how, how he is, we don't know. So um, maybe the Kraken, I don't know, the Kraken have a lot of more different choice at Ben Bishop to select a goaltender. Jake Allen, Kawinen, Kanonen from Minnesota, Chris Drager, they can get on UFA and, you have other goaltender you're going to get around the league. So better at what Bishop is. More younger, more cheaper. I think I think Minnesota uh, Kraken is looking for three goaltender in my eyes for me. Yeah. They're looking for Vanichek from Washington. Right. Jake Allen from Montreal Canadian. Ka Onan, or is it Ken Onan? The, Kockenen the, is, is Kakanen available? Yes, from Minnesota. And um Man, I would and, protect him over Cam Talbot in like five minutes. <laughs> so that would be like one or two girls then over there. And then after that, you're on the UFA, they can pick up someone over there. So um, I would be very surprised on, his, on that specific topic, Pierre, for the Wild. I'd be very surprised if they exposed him. He's a young up-and-coming goalie, and they've groomed him for a long time. And, I mean, we see they're going young. So I would not be surprised if protect Tan Talbot the way he was goaltending the this year yeah. over there. He's pretty old now. Like he's 31, 32, isn't he? He's about 30, yeah, 31. Yeah. Uh interesting. All right. Well, I guess that's exciting. So we can uh we can plan to kind of update everybody on what that list looks like. So I'm excited to see that because it takes a lot of the uncertainty out of and you can just focus on picking players. Uh, we saw this signing yesterday, Dylan Gambrell. He's kind of like a bottom six guy in San Jose. I thought he emerged really well last year as being a useful player. 
he gets 1.1 million, which, you know, given a lot of the contracts we're seeing that are under a million for this type of player, this kind of is a little bit of uh, indication he's kind of important to them. What do you think? It's only one year though, but. Well, it's a, around what they are, right? And then yeah. he got that contract. He had 43 game, 49 game last season. Yeah. He, he, you know, he's a bottom six. And that's the what the money they get. Um, the good thing about them, you know, you know, he show up now in the NHL. They have a consistency. They have to be a full year. Uh, so that's a good, good, new, good sign for him. Um, but again, I think that's not fixed what San Jose problem they have over there. Yeah, for sure they've got other issues. And I think we touched we we're gonna talk about San Jose today, I believe. So it'll be no, we do already talk we already went through San Jose and picked up the players yesterday. Sorry, my bad. Yeah, the San Jose AHL team is young. Um and I posted him here with the uh <laughs> the Barracuda jersey. I kinda like it. Um Yo, uh, was it Joaquin Blickfell? We saw him in the WHL with Portland, and I think he's going to be a real good player for San Jose. He's going to solve some problems for them. Um, he's got high end talent, he's got a little bit of size. He's not a physical player, but he's very smart and talented. So, I'm interested in that. I'd be curious, Adam, who else you think in San Jose is really interesting on the Barracuda? Good morning to Dan and Joseph have joined us this morning, Pierre. Awesome. Um, all right, so then after this is, you know, this is kind of the big news. I, I'm not going to say I'm surprised. However, <laughs> Ryan Graves is traded to Colorado for, uh, is it Mikhail Maltsev and then a second-round pick. Maltsev had six goals in 30-some-odd games last year. He's a pretty decent forward. He's like 6'2". I thought he played very well. And to get a second on top of it gives him another asset, but – Ryan Graves to me is like something they don't have a lot of. Like once you get past Eric Johnson, everyone else is very similar, like these smaller mobile defensemen. So I was kind of disappointed in this, to be honest with you. Um, it was a, for me, it's a surprise because they got something. Um, he went to New Jersey. Uh, um, you know, I think it was a little bit surprised, but it's not a surprise for Joe Sakic. You have a, no choice, you have to protect McCarr with. Uh, David Doves and Girard, so yeah, no choice to, you know. I guess so, yeah. Yeah, it's had, crazy. I guess, like, Taves was a late addition last year, so I guess they're obviously rating Taves ahead of Graves, but I mean, Graves is a big guy and he plays physical and he can contribute offensively a little bit. I don't know. It's kind of weird for me. But... I don't think so. I think if you look, his number is not really there on the offensive <laughs> side. I, I, I think he's a bottom four on the top four. Um, you know, he, 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 he's really show up the last two years. That's really what he become right now. And he show up that way. So he's a, he's a Joel and Munson 2.0, Jimmy Olichek 2.0 is six, five two ten 10 to 20, uh, yeah. defensive side, clean up event. Uh, he's still young, but he still had a lot of work to do also. So uh, he came in the league late, uh, in NHL. Uh, I think it was drafted by a Columbus, if I can recall it. Rangers. Um, so I, I think at some point, he, he, the good news for this, for him, is go with a young team where he's going to be more highlights, he's going to be the top three defensemen over there. Um, so, you know what I mean? I, I think it would be better for him to be in with the Panthers, example, right? With Carolina, example, to have a better chance to win the Stanley Cup. On the flip side, now he become one of the top best defensemen over there. With I, sure. I think it's a great for me overall. I look this way: great, great move of Tom Fitzgerald. I was That's what say. I see that part where for for me yeah. it, it's great. Go for Joe Sakic. He's going to lose him anyway. He get for me not Malseb, but he could really a second round pick over there. Uh, that's what I'm. I'm at sixty one, so it's pretty good overall. Malseb only thirty three game in NHL. Um, Six he, goals. He just Beat, but I, I don't know how he can make it. Like uh, he, he it's tough in Colorado, you know. So maybe at the Colorado he can get those bottom six and maybe get like right. a little bit. Like I don't know how he cannot be better to Tyler Joss or something like that, right? So I think he have a, a better wow. chance to produce more over there. And he is not small. I think the kid is six three guy. also. Yeah. Um, so He's I think for that one, yeah. Bolt is a winner. But that's um, I was to get. Stabilize better the, the the defensive side over there. I'll be interested in what now that New Jersey is going to do. They let go Subban and Butcher 
you know, I would go be interesting what, what happened now for the Kraken to pick up uh, which one over there for the Devils. But uh, good move for Tom Fitzgerald. Have, look, so. he have grace now, Tom, uh, Ty Smith. Um, right. As a defenseman, that's pretty solid. They have another one I'm forgetting right now in my head. Uh, they that, signed a um, Southern guy, her, whatever his last name, the long. Severson? I'm sorry? Damon Severson? No, yeah, they are him also there, but the, the, the long, like, second hair from Washington. Oh, just, Stegen Feller. They just signed him a couple of yeah, days ago. Know. So uh, that's another one over there. So it's very good. For New Jersey, I believe, and they are on, on rebuilding. So uh, it's just yeah. for Ryan Grace, lose maybe a chance to win the Stanley Cup. Well, who says he stays there? I mean, he had 26 points the previous season. He had nine goals. He can shoot the puck. He's not, a, you know, he's not like, obviously, Kale McCarr is a high-end offensive player. Gerard's a good offensive player. Taves can play on the power play, second power play unit. But he can too, like he can contribute. So I, I think that what they really missed in the playoffs was some of that size and strength. And I think New Jersey gets a real good player. I agree with you. And I think Tom Fitzgerald's done a great job here. Maltzev is a good I, – I think Adam hits it on the head. He's a big physical guy and he can score. Like he looked very dangerous when you saw him in limited action last year, especially at the end of the season. I really liked what I saw. I also liked um, Sharaganov and – I guess it'll be interesting to see if he resigns with New Jersey or if he goes back to the KHL. But if you look, like Sharon Sharon Ganov had a like 16 or 14 goals. He was like the third or fourth leading scorer on the team. So I, I would have liked to have seen them try to get him because he's for a free agent. But you know maybe they know he's going to go back. I don't know. And I agree, he's a big he's a big guy, so I like him. But it, it, for Grace, like you know, he only two goals this year. So, but again, it, it's like. His limit is rolling. The uh, New Jersey is going to be a little bit different. So that will be something Probably. about that one over there. So it'll be very really interesting about that one over there. For the New Jersey, listen, the defensive now is looking good. Right. Uh, you have, you know, they they will let it go, Ryan Murray, but it's still like Ty Smith, second dollar over there. Now Ryan Graves, Bush, uh, Boucher, Butcher, and Severson, and then Subban. So one of the two is going to leave. Uh, yeah. I think they're going to be looking more for. Um, but you don't know. It's like they don't have to protect Ty Smith anyway. So yeah. you're yeah, going to protect Severson, uh, Graves, and um, Sigan Dollar. And then the, they have a pick between Bacher and Subban. So I don't think so. They will go with Subban at $9 million. So no. still Subban with the team, I think is really strong defensively. Um, and then, you know, you just have to get now the forward. That's what they're looking. They need for. I mean, they'll probably. Expose Ryan Murray is he a UFA? I can't remember. Is he a UFA? Yeah, Butcher Butcher is he can take him. I don't think he's really reached what you would never thought. been the same way. Yeah. One good year that was limited. So I think there's a real good move for them. I I I think that uh, this is in line with what we've seen from Fitzgerald. He's very savvy. So it's probably these three guys, right? It'll be like Smith and Severson and Graves. They'll protect. Expose Subban if they're willing to bite on that big contract, let them. Um, yeah, it's a good move by New Jersey. I like it. All right. Um, we heard more stories that yesterday was the he's right over. about that. He says it's a trade is a win win. Absolutely right. I think so. You're probably right in the end. Yeah, yeah absolutely right. There's a second losing graves so not for nobody, and now he get a second round pick, he get a young player, and then. New Jersey win uh, Graves. So uh, it's great, great comment about yeah. that. I don't know. I think it's the first time he's here. So welcome aboard. And uh, yeah, hopefully you go to subscribe to the show at the Hockey Nation Live show. I think we've seen Fallon. But yeah, please subscribe. Bring your buddies. Hey, guys, do you think Graves was traded to make room for Landis Cog? I don't think that was a factor, right? I think it's just not the, at all. I think not, it's either not, not at all. Yeah. There's just it's a, a good lot. question. The yeah. reason Frank he did that because they have to expose – uh, graves to the Kraken because they cannot go with four defensemen. So the reason why they did that, they're going to lose Graves and they get something in, in return. And now they open up at $26 million. But again, um, from from uh, Elliot Feldman this morning, he don't understand Lestagal because now he's he, he looking right now for 7, 8 or 8 or 7. So he's looking for, for $55 million 
50 million dollars and then the color you want to give him only 35 to 40. yeah it's tough for me like he's a 55 60 point player to me which is fine he is the captain he's consistent goal scorer so that's fine but he's not like he is top six um i guess they're just trying to you know you think when you've got mckinnon at what 6.8 do you give him more than yeah. him? <laughs> like, they gave ranton him more but you know mckinnon had already been signed for like four years right um will buffalo protect cody eakin i don't think so no yeah you know how a great year by the way last season yeah it wasn't he hurt too he's like Buffalo's going like young American, I think. Like they'll they'll have guys like they gave responsibility to Middlestad and Tage Thompson and Bjork, and I think that that formula will be consistent now that Granado's the coach. I think they'll just go that route, um, and those guys produce pretty well. Devils need to buff up the defense, and Abs needed cap. So I think you're right on both of these. It definitely helps them in both instances, and they they get a good player and a, you know a draft pick back. So. What do we think about the Duncan Keith trade? We're not big. I'm not big fan of it. I I think that especially given Ryan Suter being out there for nothing, that well, you know, it's like anything else. If he knew this, I'm sure he would think twice about that, right? But um, yeah. um, for me, it, it's good on one side if they depend next season. But I think Keith bring what they don't have inside a locker room. I, I think there's absolutely that element. He, he's not the Duncan Keith of old, but even the Duncan Keith and old Pierre was like a 45 point defenseman. So they don't get like the offensive oomph on the power play that they would normally get from a Tyson Berry, but they probably are better five on five. Although last year was no indication. Like he was not great five on five. No, no, he was one of the worst in NHL and five yeah. versus five so, again like that. He gave you for me minutes. He gave you experience. He gave sure. you leadership. He give you what they don't have for that part of their base. Don't give you the make the. He's not going to make you the on the eyes this thing better and like a great defenseman over there. It's just yeah. for D number three. It's a lot of money on AAV. That's only thing is negative on my case. Yeah, I I don't disagree with that. I think that makes sense. Um, Mr. Joseph Ferreira, directly from Joseph. Elizabeth, New Jersey. I'm pretty sure he's happy about that trade. Him. Uh, Fallon again says, "Do you think that Ike will be moved? I think he'll be moved. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there's some well, injury. Well, you know, that is a good, is a great question because the price is too high, and yeah. oh yeah, longer they have to drop. So, um. I believe me, Montreal is going to sign Jack Eagle, Doug Hamilton, and Mike Hoffman. Who said that? What? Oh, you're saying that? Yeah. Oh, wow. They might as well go for it. Breaking news. Tampa Bay's Buccaneer. Tom Brady played the entire season with a torn MCL. Is that football? I think so. Uh, yeah, that's happened yesterday. They mentioned about that one over there. I don't know a lot about football, so... Um, yeah, so just touching on the Kiv Lennox, I guess, you know, we, we mentioned this yesterday. They had the memorial at 10 a.m. Eastern. And I guess the other goalie, um, Elvis, you were mentioning, said that Kiv Lennox kind of got in the way and protected him and his daughters and wife. So, you know, really sad story, but there's, a, there's some good articles out there on this. Uh, Kareen, thanks for joining us. Kareen, welcome. Bonne journée. Bon matin. Sorry. Bienvenue. All right. So, uh, and then the Keith Yandel buyout. I mean, we talked about this a little bit yesterday. Oh, you're a uh, Flames fan. And there's been rumors that Kachuk wants out. Do you think he'll be moved for Vlad Tarasenko? Uh, they trade him in St. Uh, St. Louis. That's what the reason about that one there. Um, Possible, they will trade him. I would not be surprised. Somebody sent him back in Ottawa, but I think it would be a mistake. But uh, the rumor from Elliot Feldman, he sent him. And, and again, it's not helping Calgary. Calgary has to take a decision. Are you moving to go winning or are you moving for prospect? Everything like that. 
And the problem they have is signed two years that have a Mark Strom to tell, hey, we're going to have a great team, and they don't perform as a great team. So it would be really interesting. If you change your asset, you have to figure out how we improve the team to win the Stanley Cup or we're going to go on the prospect. And that's what they are right now, and that's what's difficult. What do you do? If they want to extend the contract at Johnny Goodrow, and if you trade catch up, I think it's not catch up a problem. I think they should not go on winger. They're already missing a winger. They should yeah. move, move on the line or the center. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I think a lot depends upon – morning, Adam. Says Michael Rosenblatt. Um, not I yet. Lot, I think a lot – yeah, we haven't. I think a lot depends upon Sean Man Monahan returning – from his injury because he you know he played with this injury that's no joke so we're like wow he's always been a 30, 28 30 goal scorer this guy's been really productive since he came to the nhl um they really count on that and then johnny goudreau feels like maybe he's peaked which is you know in the, with that contract coming up so I, I think you're right um linholm's been you know really good since the trade from carolina it's unfortunate if they have to move a Matthew Kachuk, though. That's a tough player to replace. Um, I'll be honest with you. For me, Calgary right now is looking or is going the direction like San Jose Shark did a couple of years ago. Really? I feel like they're going to go down, down, down. I can't go you know, they Giordano right now. So yeah. report. I mean, I like. I think you're right. They probably need to go young then. I. But again, like the message you just dropped to Max Strom and Dan Ev is not right, right? So no. they, they get catch up. It's not helping to get Tarasenko over there for what they are missing. They need another forward over there. We we saw this before when Daryl Sutter was in Calgary and they, they went to the Stanley Cup final and they came real close and lost it back when, the, when Tampa won it. And they kept hanging on to Kiprasov. They kept hanging on, kept hanging on. I know there's a lot of pressure in Calgary to win, and they're not going to be real tolerant from a fan perspective, but now would be the time if you're going to rebuild. I mean, I know the draft's not necessarily amazing this year, but, you know, this year and next year, there's some good players coming up. You know, you got the Shane Wright lottery next year. You're going to have Connor Bedard at some point. There, there's they a are lot in the middle. The, the problem they have is, like, they have a good foundation. Right. <laughs> it's Monaghan have to be Monaghan, Right. Catch yeah. have to be catch up, right? Goodrow yeah. is did very good. It's just they're missing a good winger to make that team better. A one defenseman now on the left side. And I think the team will be pretty. So we'll see what's happening there. I don't think so that we'll fix their problem to check to to trade catch up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you would think he'd be part of the solution. He's not that old. Yeah. Um, so Julian Gauthier was signed by what, the Rangers? Yeah, the Rangers signed him for uh, about 11 o'clock, um, signed him for one year only. Uh, Cam Johnson signed a two-way contract for the Columbus Blue Jacket. They are at that moment until we come live here, the last two news in NHL this morning. On It was very quiet morning compared to like yesterday morning. So um, that's what happening about that. Um, I forgot to mention one thing, the Duclair contract. What? What did you think of the Anthony Duclair contract? Um, hey, we talked about this yesterday. It's a good contract. A uh, little bit higher what I expect. But again, on he, he, he produces 32 points, 43 games. So the guy can make about 60 points per yeah. year. So at that at that level, the way he did with 60, 50 points. So it's not it's not it's not much for three million dollars, right? The two okay. problems happened with him. Uh, is his injury pass or well, he's not full play all the time, right? That's a problem he got. The second thing, uh, he did not do well in the playoff, but the, I think he did well before that. The line with um, with him, Bennett, and Uberdo together. He brings speed, need to get better on the defensive side. But I think at $3 million, three years, it's a good contract. Um, great asset. The game protect that top six over there. And that's good for the Florida Panthers to get that one over there. Um, he did not score the the way he scored the, the 
the year before. But he was not lucky at the beginning. He has a lot. Of, he missed a lot of possibilities. Score more goal at the beginning. But yeah. when you play Michael yeah. with Hubert Do, he, he can score. You play with Barkov, he can play. Yeah. He can score. So he was up and down with that line. Sometimes he will yeah. play third line. In worst case, at three million dollars, top three, top nine is a good contract. It's only yeah. three years. So. Right. Yeah, and he finally gets maybe a home to stay for a while because he's bounced around quite a bit. He's made mistakes of trying to be his own agent in the past, which I don't think really helped him. And he probably asked for crazy money. Like he was asking for like five, six million in Ottawa, right? So <laughs> but the second thing we don't talk about this because I know personally him a little bit, not like I don't talk to him, but I know some people close to him in Montreal. And he finds his home here, Michael. And sometimes that's, that's what you need. He really find a home. I will tell you one reason, like how you know that. But he was a part of the the community service for the play, the youth travel, like learn to play hockey, like two weeks oh, ago. Good. No so way. He gave back again, and we talk about June and around. So that uh, uh, Plurla does this, Michael, is because he feels good. He he loved to be around here. So that's why he get less money for what he could get or he would like to get. So he can change. He, he get his maturity. He was on that, and he can pro on the on the, on the graphic he show. He scored 10 goals and 43, so it's about, what, Not 15, 20. 18, yeah. maybe almost 20, right? He scored yeah. 23, he could score 25. He scored 8 and 11, it's about like 25 goals right there. He scored 11, 53, it's another 15. So he, he, he can score, Michael, yeah. at 15, 20, 22 goals. At $3 yeah. million, dollars, Michael, it's not expensive. No, and he's been... Offensively, he's been relatively consistent. We know he's got lots of talent. Um, I think he, I mean, the plus 27, I think, and the assist number going up, I think those are all indications maybe he's matured. This is as a, a good statement. We don't talk about this. Plus yeah. 27 is something very good for his case over there. So it's another plus for them, for him yeah. also. Do you think that Joe Thornton or Patrick Marlowe will be going out with a cup? I don't. Is Patrick Marlowe playing this year, first of all? Is yeah, Joe he's not retired yeah. yet. Uh, <laughs> Thornton, after what we hear, is Toronto home. I think yeah. Toronto is going to give him a contract, Michael, at 700 or something like that. Yeah. And they would tell him the role he's going to do, yeah. and he would accept that. Um, I, like I think Toronto. he will fill up some spot like that, but I expect him to sign at Toronto or nowhere. Malo's situation is the same thing. He stands in Jose who is out. Yeah. Malo now is not about the Stanley Cup because he knows about that. I would not be surprised, Michael, this is over for Patrick Malo. I yeah. have more chance to They're see Thornton real. back and Malo at that moment. They're both real close, right? Like, it's not... Yeah. These guys are old, man. Was, was the draft 97? Yeah. That, they're both from the 1997 draft. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is yeah, like, yeah. like who? Think of the guys that they were drafted with. I don't know if anybody's playing. Like it's crazy if you look down this list, right? Like it's like no, you don't have anybody anymore. Nobody. So they they've been you know real good for a real long time, and I uh, like go back to number 24. Um, right. Jean Francois Danfoss, Michael, I like coach him. Wow. And listen, and you know more because you come Canada. He was my goaltender skirt C. Not oh. double A. Well, I know it double A, but not A, not B, C. So we went 24 to 24. We gave two goals all year long. And he he had 22 shutout. Like Damn. he had no reason to be at that level. But that's what I I I and he was coming yeah. from a city where nobody like I you have only wood. He was like far away. He was terrible. And uh, I got him one year. And then after that, he, he go double oh, A and the replay. But uh, Jean-Francois Danfoss, he never been the goaltender. Uh, he went to the East Coast Hockey League after that. He was a good draft, you know, first round pick, but he never make it. Yeah, honestly. he was really, really. American really, Hockey League, and that's it. But he was really, really skinny, right? Yeah. Like super skinny. <laughs> Uh, Johnny Golden says Pat Brisson is the agent for Tyler Toffoli and Tyson Berry. Good friends with Ber yep. Bergevin. I yep. have stories about that, but we're going to invite Pat on. I know Pat from LA area. So we'll You're see. You're going to see three players Tyson Berry, Kate Yandel, or Doug Hamilton in Montreal. Yeah, they'll do something. 
they have to with the Shea Weber thing. Um, I don't know. I think we'll invite Pat on. So I'll, I'll send him a message at some point and see if he'll join us for a bit. He's a nice guy. Um, and then the we can show a goaltender, Adam, for the, the Anderson and also they will maybe keep Ferguson and Thompson together on the American Hockey League. After that, what oh. do you expect next yeah. year? My next year, Adam Fleury is gone. So they were hanging one of the two of them, and then you're going to see one of the two uh, pick up the NHL at some point if they deserve it. I really uh, like Thompson. I'm trying to decide if I think he'll be an NHL goalie or not, but maybe. Um, well, backup number two should be not too bad. Wasn't Weber bought out? No, Weber got hurt, and he's going to be hurt. And now, I believe, Michael, we're not going to see again Shea Weber. Yeah. It, it and seems- I will tell you a couple of things. First, he's got hurt. Now he's going to be on the – he's got $6 million next year. And then after that, Michael, he played for the last four years his contract at $1 million. So at 37 years old, do you back and play in NHL for $1 million after you accomplish? I think the family, the situation is going to be, I don't see him to come back. Yeah, it, it, it sounds risky, right? It sounds like that might be the end of the line for him. So. Um, all right, so we've got a little bit of time. I do have a hard stop. So I didn't, I messed up this slide a little bit, by the way, which I, you'll see some of the, just the title slide, but it That's doesn't. That's all right, Fallon, about that one over there. Um, Oscar no, is not going to return for, he's done. Michael, he was mentioned this like a couple of months ago, yeah. and there will be me a slim, a slim chance when they talk about him. He's, re, you know, his injury was feel better, but now, I don't see what happened again. Yeah, for sure. Um, sorry, I, for, I, miss, I didn't update the words, but the logos are there. Today, we're going to take a quick look at Philadelphia, the Islanders, Rangers, and Ottawa. Obviously, at 5 o'clock Eastern today, we're going to know the actual protected list, so that'll probably help. It's Saturday, some... Michael. Oh, it's tomorrow. Seven, 17. Oh, got it. Okay. Is so it 16, not... 17 today? Today's 16. Yeah. 17, oh. 5 o'clock Eastern time. All oh, the team in NHL uh, sent to NHL their protection list. And yes, uh, Duncan Keith wanted to be in the West, and he hadn't seen his son. We know that there was a pretty high profile yep. there and might involve Patrick Sharp. Um, <laughs> yep, so right. All right, so the first group is the Flyers. If we take a look at the Flyers. I kind of think, first off, they're going to have to tr- protect Giroux. It sounds like they're not going to pre- I don't know, Michael. Always fall for the defenseman because something yeah, go right. with four or three, that chance yeah. you will forward. So, to I mean, if it's me, I'm protecting Provorov, I'm protecting Sanheim, and I'm protecting Myers. And I, I think I would want to protect Hag, but it just depends on my forward situation. I, I will let go Myers. I would protect Ag. Really? Oh, yeah. Myers had a terrible year. Was he terrible. Did a terrible year, but I feel like he has long-term potential. <laughs> I would protect Ag, Sanham, and a Provorov. And you would expose Myers? At that moment, depends what I'm going to the left side, but yeah. Yeah, yeah that's what I was saying. It depends. So now we, we're hearing that they're going to expose Voracek. And I think at 8.2, you expose him. So you go for Giroud, Ace, Konek, Konek, Nick. Yep. Couturier. Right, that's three. Couturier, that's four. Line Blum, that's five. Uh, they're going to go with Lockton. Yeah. That's Scotty six. Obe Kubel, that's seven. Wow. So you think they'll protect him over Nolan Patrick just because of the injury? Uh, Patrick, I think, is it not? I don't think so. He's on the... Um, I'm so confused because it's he's on his entry level contract. It's his third year. No, he's on his fourth, second contract, Pierre. Yeah. So you have to protect Nolan about that one. That's seven. So are you not protecting Kubel then? So you go with Nolan, Kubel, that's two. Kutsuri, well, that's three. Cunning Dix, that's four. Ace, that's five. Giroud, that's six. And I protect. Logged in, don't I expose 
Uh, Konechny, Len Blom, and Ren no, Rizdik. No, you're not going to expose Konechny. The guy's like their top player. No, no. I, I, I let it go. Um, I let it go. James Rizdim, Voracek. Oh, yeah. JVR. Right. That's two over there. Yeah. And then I let it go. Uh, Len Blom. I think I don't have no. I have nothing for him. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Okay. So, um, hi Javier. Thanks for joining us. We're excited to have you back. All right. So, who do you pick of all the available players? You've got Voracek and Ram Van Riemsdyk that are available. You've got Oscar Lindblom. You said, and then you got Shane Gostabere and Philippe Myers and probably Justin Braun. And then in net, you might. I mean, you're going to protect Carter Hart. I so, think they will go between two players. Yeah. I, I think they will go it, because I think one of them, the Philadelphia can, they need to pick up someone with money. I think they will possible to go with uh, John Van, GVR over a check. So JVR can score, but he's he looked better the last two years, and he had a great start yeah. to last year. Voracek is probably a better overall player, but he's you know another million two. I'm trying to. He's definitely getting up there. They're both I, up. Um, for my big, I go with GVR. I'm trying to debate. It's a good point, Fallon, about him. The problem you get, you're going to have a twenty-four, or three million dollars, and they're going to try to get a little bit more cheaper at that age. They will. And Philadelphia offers something different. If Len Bond was with Detroit, they would maybe look at him. But because with Philadelphia and they need players with higher salary, and for all the salary they get around, I think for them, they will select something like I said, GVR over a check. I mean, I think the issue for these guys, they're so they're pretty old now. Yeah, but at some point you have to reach Michael the 40, 60 million dollars. Yeah, they'll hit that. I mean, I don't think that's going to be an issue. They'll probably hit 67 pretty easily. Why? Wow, with only 23 players, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know. Anytime I've been through it, I've always kind of landed around 67. But I select and a again, lot. Of they, they, we have to get like Jason Zucker, some stuff like that from Pittsburgh, if you that. Yeah, I, th I think when I pick, usually it's like. Yeah, I'll have to look back, but I think they can get there pretty, pretty comfortably. Um, so you're picking Van Riemsdyk? Yeah. Okay. So Coach Frenchie says JVR. Ah, uh, man. Um, I don't love JVR. <laughs> I feel like I want to – so we're saying Ghost of Bear and Meyer are – and Braun are the exposed. If Hag was exposed, I would absolutely pick Hag. Um, Lindblom, there's that little X factor of concern just because of the history of the last few years. But when he was healthy, he was real good. Um, you can get Philip Myers. Yeah, I, I'm just wondering with all the other D out there if it's if the depth is there, but. I think that I would pick a forward from them. I'm maybe the gray beard is Voracek. Maybe I'll just, I don't know. I don't really want either of them. They're too old. <laughs> I'm going to go with Limblom. The problem, uh, Adam, about Brown is that 34 years old and he, uh, as a defenseman, you would like to try to get younger and they're going yeah. to get Giordano at yeah. some point. So Maybe. for me to get him, it's not helping a lot. And I believe he's a more like now a defense number five or six. So and that would not the reason why I don't say you don't get it, but that's what was said. Thanks, Xavier. Yeah, yeah thanks. Uh, thank you, Javier. Um, all right, let's move on to the next team. We belabored this one. So the next team are the New York Islanders on D. I think you're going to protect, obviously, Ryan Pulak. I think you're going to protect Adam Pellick. Do you protect and Nick Phil. and Mayfield? That's it. Yep. And you expose Nick Letty? Yep. Okay. On forward, you've got Barza, Lee, Nelson. You're going to probably protect Eberly. So that's four, right? 
Pajot. So, Ibeli, Nelson, Lee, Barzol, that's four. Pajot, that's five. Bailey, that's six. Beauvillier. Beauvillier, that's seven. I don't know because the message in front of me, so I don't know the list oh, you have. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, let it to be exposed. I can tell you exactly who they're going to pick. They're going to pick um, Bellows for them. Um, but it says he has 13 games remaining, so he's not even eligible. Uh, yes, he is. Is he? Yeah. I mean, if he's available, I pick him. I think he's kind of on the cusp of doing something finally, you know. Um, I can look again about him, but uh, yeah, I, I thought that 13 games remaining meant that he's not eligible. But maybe he is. So if we, I mean, if we go with the assumption he's available, I would absolutely pick him. Nick Letty's tempting, but it depends on what other D you're picking, I guess. Yeah. Kiefer Bellows exposed an expansion. Let's see. Barzo, 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 Bale. Unprotected forwards. Yep. Yeah, it looks like he's he's available. So I would pick Bellows. I don't know why he's available, but he only played 22 games. That's why I say, like, it says he has 30, 13 remaining to meet the minimum. The only thing I can say, Michael, is because he's now at his second contract. That's maybe what it is. Yeah, I don't, I don't think they're going to expose Mayfield. I think they would expose Letty before Mayfield. No, it's confirmed already by Allenders. Yeah, that they're they're gonna expose Letty, not Mayfield, right? Yeah. So see they let go Lady. So that would be someone that would pick about that one over there. Yeah. All right. So what do what do we what did we land on? Um I would um at that moment if Bellows is not on the list, example, right? Because example he missing game every time like that, right? Yeah. Um I have to go with Lady. Yeah, that, that's kind of what I was thinking. Yep. I'm probably the same. We think a lot of like Pierre. Yeah. Bouvillier would not be available. <laughs> yeah, Bouvillier is not. He's a RFA, but he's going to be signing and protect. And they're going to protect him. <laughs> he's very good. All yeah. right, let's go to the next two teams. So we've got the New York Rangers. This will be interesting. So we know they're going to protect Kreider, Panarin, and, our, and Zabanajad. I think they'll protect Strom. So let's go to the D first. So we know they're going to protect Truba. They're going to protect I assume, Lindgren. Lindgren. Jeez, who else do they protect? They got nothing. They're young. They will maybe protect worst case D'Angelo. No, really? <laughs> yeah, because they want to trade him. They're not gonna no one's gonna want him. Um yeah, so they will they will maybe protect him if to get something in return or some worst case. The only one my call is like Peter To or, or D'Angelo. So you go with D'Angelo. I go with Potato. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Either way, you're not gonna pick a defenseman from this team in the draft. So you have to go with three about yeah. that one over there. So seven forwards are Panarin, Kreider, Zabanajad, Strom, That's Bukinate, four. So that's one, five. Five. Scheidel. Um, and then yeah, I'm surprised he's still that uh, maybe he's not on the UFC anymore, but yeah. Maybe. Um, and then and they then just Blackwell Goche. and yeah, Blackwell. So you think they'll expose Gochi and not Blackwell? Oh, yeah, they'll expose Gochi versus Blackwell. That's too bad. I was I was thinking that Blackwell would be available, but <laughs> uh, well, that makes things a little different. If and then on goal, they're going to protect Georgia. As a reason, they tried to trade Pujinovich so that they could keep Black or um, who would they keep? 
Well, the problem with, with Nevesh Michael is because now with him, they're going to spend about $4 million for his next contract at 26. So then he would prefer to get a prospect and other good players in return. I don't th was D'Angelo bought out? I thought his ca contract was canceled or something. I, he's not by out yet. Oh, no. No. Fallon, um, to insert to him, that's D'Angelo's the, the not go where. That's the biggest question this morning was about why not D'Angelo to Montreal? I don't think you want this guy, though. Like. But at the end of the day, on the ice, just on the ice, the kids, he can play hockey. For sure. Yeah, and maybe I don't understand what happened off the ice. I can't. I have to look into that. Which one? Well, I don't. Maybe I'm like overreacting, but I thought that he had some off ice issues or and in the dressing room. What happening? He's hit the gold tent. He, he, the discussion was a start with a oh. with a gold tent. There was discussion. Sure, yeah. that. Thanks for your like, Javier. Thank uh, you so much, buddy. Don't forget, right. everybody, to click on the likes. That would be awesome. We have about 13 so far, so um, that'd be great. We can get 15 at the end of the show. All right. So, we, you, who would you pick from this team if you're Seattle? Um, I mean, if if you're saying, and it looks like Blackwell's not available, because originally I was thinking he would be available. They have Brett Howden. He's kind of a bottom six guy. It's going to be between Harden and Gochi. Yeah. Yeah. Gochi's 23. I think Gochi has got some potential there. He's a big, he's kind of like an Alex Tuck. Yeah. Type. I will go with Harden. Harden. Yeah. All right. I'm going to go with Gochi. Harden might be more useful, but I think Gochi can score a little bit and he's a big yep, guy. I'm sure Fallon about that. Which team do you like, Fallon? I feel like you like Edmonton. I could be wrong. I, I can't remember. I thought he said who he liked. Is that a, oh, did did he answer? He's the first time here. No, I think he's been here before. Flames. That's what it was. He said the Flames. Awesome. All right, final team here. The uh, Ottawa Senators. So, yeah, they, they're going to be interesting. So they're going to protect Shabbat, Zaitsev, and I don't know. Do they protect Brown? No, he protect Met Mete, okay. Zed uh, Zed and Shabbat. Okay, so there's the three. So they're exposing Brown, and then I don't think they're going to protect Stepan, are they? He's UFA anyway, so they're not going to protect him. I think they'll protect Dadnov, Colin White. I don't think they're going to protect Anisimov. So it's Dadnoff, White, Brown. That's three. Tierney, four. Oof, I don't know. They have, they're going to protect Kachak. That's five. Nicola Paul. Nick Paul, six. And then either Austin Watson or Zingle. What does he have on the b b lower? Nothing else? Um... Oh, Drake Batherson. I think you're going to take Drake Batherson, no? Oh, yeah. Of course. Okay, so they expose Austin Watson and so Ryan. Batherson, that's one. Yep. Ketchuk, that's two. Paul, yep. that's three. Yep. Brown, that's four. What do you have after that now? Colin White. Colin White. and That's Dad. five. Wow, that's crazy. So you got if you go you're going to protect DNA, that's six. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Tierney, yeah. Wow. Um it's going to be between Watson and Dadanov. And it would be crazy if they let go Dadanov because he have a bad year. But again, maybe they want to give the money, go back, so that it'd be possible he'd be open up. Javier, what do you want to do for us? Just let us know what you're thinking. We could use some help posting videos on. Uh, we get we get videos every day from an intern who cuts videos for TikTok. If you're interested in that, let me know. Um, um, 
So who do you think's available? We think it's like Dezingle and Watson, right? And then yeah. of course, Anisimov, you're not going to pick. The problem is because you don't know what they will do, protect yeah. Ottawa, right? So that's the problem about that one, well, because maybe, uh, you know what I mean? Like maybe that enough is open. Maybe, um, you know, other player we don't see over there, but um, I think I have to go with right now. <laughs> Austin Watson is the only one yeah. I can see. The only problem with Austin Watson is he's had known issues with alcohol and off ice issues. Yeah. But he's a big, strong guy. He's experienced with Nashville. Um, he's 29. Jeez. Uh, Fallon, uh, Fallon, I believe he cannot protect Logan Brown. He's not going to be on the list because he's still missing game for look like. Man, 26 games still. He's really not panned out. I mean, I think you're probably right, Pierre. I think you probably go Austin Watson. You're going to have enough other guys that – I like Austin on the ice. Go he back on the right defenseman again, on the defenseman. Yeah, there's not really much there. Like, you're going to protect these three guys. You'd have Brown. You're not going to pick up these two. You don't care about them. Do you pick up Josh Brown? He's going to have a hard time getting in the top six of Seattle. I know. Like, he might be 9 or 10. They might have a lot of crazy. All right, uh, Javier, our TikTok is Hockey Nation Live. I agree with you, Fallon, about that one there. But that's the reason why Ottawa need him more to anybody else. So I would not be surprised to keep him and try to expose that enough because of the money situation. Yeah. All right. So, I mean, I think I stick with Watson. I think that's good. All right. So we got our players. So today we picked, you picked JVR. I picked Limblom. Uh, we but either again, like Monday morning, right? Is going it, to be another be discussion not. there because now you're going to see the list of everybody. Yeah. It'll be now interesting. You, you do a mock draft with every people in the crowd here on the chat and talking about that. Yeah. All right, Pierre, we're going to wrap up, but William Sheffield, thank you for joining us at the end. Uh, thank you for Javier and Adam and Fallon. We had um, also, in addition to Adam, we had Michael Rosenblatt was here. So thank you to Michael. And we also had our friends Kimberly and Karine. Karine. Karine, there she was. Karine. Karine est été ici un matin, Karine. Bienvenue. Merci beaucoup d'être arrêté, Karine. Uh, Adam, don't forget, everybody, we're going to be live tonight, 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Uh, with the power play show with Cold Friend Sheet tonight, we go to um, a quiz. Michael become popular last night. Twelve people, and Michael Rosenblatt was five and five last night. Oh boy! Yeah, yeah I'll he try hit, not to, he I'll hit try not for to. the Google help. Him. Just kidding. I'll try not to participate this time. It was good. He hit well, but we have a couple of good people. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, twelve people. Some of them. It was five, three, two, 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 two and one, 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 one. Good. It was good. Thanks, William. All right, everybody. Appreciate everybody joining. We're excited. It's going to be a busy weekend. Not a problem. Thanks, everybody.